Eddie Chavez. Ruben Nava. And Jesse Romero. Jesus 911. Jesus 911. Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Two man car. Our call signs are John 316. My partner and I, Jess Romero, two retired LA County Deputy Sheriffs, now uh, serving Christ our Lord. And uh, we're trying to bust people out of prison, which we call sin. And uh, right. we are here to, today to give you some uh, some Catholic briefing and intel. Good morning, Jess. Reporting for duty, sir. Amen. Hey, Ruben, uh, just want, I just want to mention today is the feast day before we get into the topics. Today's the feast day of St. Dominic. He's an amazing saint. He's, he's the founder of the Dominican order. He was born in Spain. He was uh, well-educated in preparation for the priesthood. Uh, St. Dominic was ordained back in 1206, and when his bishop, his bishop was named Diego, he, he was appointed a papal emissary to the Albigensians. Uh, St. Dominic was chosen to accompany him. The Albigensians, for those of you who have never heard that term, they're they were a heretical group. They were Gnostics. They they started in southern France. They believed that all matter is evil. They rejected the church's uh, teachings, and uh, they lived simple ascetical lives. And their lifestyle won them the sympathy of the common people. And the church's efforts to counteract their influence had previously been unsuccessful. Well, Saint Dominic took a new approach. They. Uh, prepared carefully for their debates uh they they faced off against the albigensians and uh they debated with them and saint dominic himself lived a very simple life and upon uh the bishop diego uh, his, upon his death saint dominic became the leader of an effort to convert these heretics through preaching through the rosary teaching them and praying the rosary and even though the church had previously relied on the exercise of military force by authorities uh, that wasn't cutting it. And so in 1215, St. Dominic organized what's called the Order of Preachers. We call them the Dominicans. They're a religious body of men living a simple lifestyle and dedicated to combating heresy by preaching a message of love and forgiveness in the gospel of Jesus Christ. This order was approved by Rome in 1216. Um, and uh, St. Dominic, in fact, him and St. Francis, uh, according to legend, they knew each other and they were closely allied and uh, St. Dominic preached and pr traveled and worked to strengthen his order and promoted the Holy Rosary until 1221 A.D. All I could say is, St. Dominic, pray for uh, us. Amen. And by the way, uh, you know, since he started the Dominican order, and we're going to be having a, a Dominican... An incredible Dominican. Dominican priest, uh, Father Brian Malay, on next Tuesday. So looking forward to that. So, Jess... Well, let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's jump... There's three different Catholics that are talking about the mass shooting, and they come at it from three different vantage points. Uh, the first one's from Dr. William Donahue. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to go through his article, but essentially what he says is uh, the reason some people would gravitate towards becoming a, a, a mass shooter. He said there's three things. He goes, they lack beliefs. They lack bonds and they lack boundaries. What does he mean by that? Mm, Belief, they lack beliefs at the heart of the problem. They lack bonds and they lack boundaries. Mm. You want to share that article? Yeah, let's talk about it. And, and yeah. you know, I learned something in here. I, I didn't know Bill Donahue. I mean, a, a lot of people know him from the, you know, as the president of the Catholic, Catholic League. League, you know, and he's been on TV. He's a, a robust uh, Catholic defender. And so, uh, but I didn't know that he was um, a sociologist, and he, oh, taught, yeah, yeah. and he taught criminology mm -hmm. and written about mass shootings. So he says, it's distressing to listen to all the chatter about, uh, about the Republicans and the Democrats being blamed for the mass shootings in El Paso, Dayton. And most, and, um, most of the talk is pure bunk, he says. He says, uh, at the heart of the problem are what I call the three Bs, which Jess just mentioned, beliefs, bonds, and boundaries. And he's also written a book about it, so it's uh, the Catholic advantage for the details. Um, he says it's not people of faith who are the most likely to go on a shooting rampage; it's those who have no religious convictions, and that doesn't surprise us all. But uh, this, he says, this doesn't mean that simply being an agnostic or an atheist is sufficient 
to cause someone to become a mass murderer. Obviously, that's nonsense. But to discount the, the role of religion in examining the lives of young men who are socially dysfunctional is also nonsense. And this is especially true of mass murderers. So the first uh, thing he says, bonds matter greatly. If someone has a strong relationship with their family and his friend and the friends, not to mention God, he's considerably less likely to become a mass killer. And again, this does not mean that all lo- loners are likely to wind up like the El Paso and Dayton killers, but it, it does mean that this characteristic, when coupled with the other two Bs, is an important variable. Let me jump in and do yeah. the next one here. It says, Donahue says, not respecting boundaries so this is the second B, is also associated with criminal behavior. All of us cross a line once in a while, but to those who find it easy to do so, no pangs of guilt, and who do so with regularity, beware. They are more likely to hurt someone than the rest of us. It reminds me, Ruben, for example, of people like Antifa or Occupy Wall Street or gang members, you know, gang members, cartels. They, they're always crossing the boundaries. They're always crossing the line. They're, just, they're used to hurting people, so it just becomes part of their DNA. That's what Donahue's saying here. Yeah, and you know, on to say? Jess, and, and uh, along those lines, <clears throat> um, I had a supervisor that, that, that uh, taught us this, that <clears throat> we, had to know, we have to know in law enforcement our boundaries. We have to know, you know the penal code. We have to know case law. We need to know department policies. And so we have to know where that line is. And we can't cross over that line. You know, that, that's, that's out of bounds. That's, and a good supervisor will be there to pull, the, pull his, his troops back before they cross that line. But we go right up to the fence because many cases you can't do your job effectively if you're not going right up to that line, right up to the fence, you know. And, uh, I mean, people aren't just, just putting their hands out and say, here, take me to jail. I mean, you, you got to go find them and, <laughs> and be creative sometimes. So, yeah, that's we do need to know our boundaries in every walk of life. Go ahead, Jess. So he says not respecting boundaries is also associated. with. No, I said he says from what we know about the suspected El Paso killer. He was a classic loner. Lay Ann Locasio, a former neighbor of Patrick Crucius, called him an extreme loner who sat alone on the school bus. He wouldn't talk to people, she said. No one really knew him. Connor Betts, the suspected Dayton killer, was described by one of his uh, of his bandmates, Jesse Creekbaum, as a loner. Another person who knew him, Brad Howard, said Betts was a quiet kid who kept to himself. It's not clear what religious affiliation, if any, Crucius had, but we know what that Betts worshipped Satan and wore satanic patches on his jacket. Let me just say something not from good. not good. from knowing. From being well read in the area of spiritual warfare, one of the things that demons try to do to cause spiritual affliction is they try to isolate people. And you'll find in people that are demonized, people that are possessed, uh, one of the symptoms is the devil was able to isolate them away from church, their family, from God, relationships. Isolation is a very, uh, once they can let, get somebody to live isolated, it's very easy for the demon to spiritually afflict the human person. And now this 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 knucklehead over here, it was easier for him to become spiritually afflicted because he actually worshiped Satan. And so that would be called, he probably made a pact with, with Satan where he it's called subjugation. And so uh, at this point he had given over his will entirely to the demon. Ruben. Yeah. It's he's on that. He's on Satan's team. Oh yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Cause there's only two teams on planet earth. You're either part of team Jesus or team Satan. And some people say, well, I'm not part of any other team. Oh, yeah, you are. Yeah. If you're not part of Team Jesus, by default, you're part of Team Satan. Yeah, Jesus said it himself, you're not with me, you're against me. And yeah, so, that's pretty clear. Much too much is being made of the political leanings of these men. And Crucius was upset with the Hispanic invasion of Texas. And in the eyes of some, that makes him a white nationalist. But he was also an extreme environmentalist, a critic of big corporations, and a proponent of universal health care. Uh, so he's not. Uh, well, he was all over the map in yeah. his politics. Yeah. Betts was a self described leftist who championed the cause of left wing terrorists. And there are many things that can be done to lessen the likelihood of mass shootings, but not to address rootlessness is a serious mistake. Rootlessness meaning that their their roots aren't deep into the ground. They're, they're you know. Yeah. They're yeah. not rooted in God, they're not rooted in family. And they're not rooted in, in, in boundaries. Again, they don't have any moral compass. Yeah. 
And then last year, there was a Cigna study that showed that the most likely persons to be lonely were young people, not the elderly. And most of them, of course, will not become mass murderers, but <laughs> it's far from their ranks, not the well-adjusted, where the next mass shooter is likely to come from. And um, earlier this year, a study was published in the Journal of Abnormal Psychology that found a, a significant increase of mental distress, depression, and suicidal thoughts among adults. The greatest increase was among the young people. So, so what's going on? Mm -hmm. The lack of social interaction is a real problem. By 2012, it was evident that smartphones and social media had, had overtaken the lives of millions of young people. And the authors of this study concluded that there was a relationship between the increase in loneliness among young people and the use of smartphones and social media. It's the amount of time that young people spend on their phones that's most disturbing. Indeed, the more time spent with these devices, the greater the risk of depression. And of course, most young people, most young persons who are addicted to their phone are not likely to murder. But again, we would we would be remiss not to study the forces that create the milieu in which the antisocial behavior is most likely to occur. Ruben, we'll pick this up on the next segment. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Just, yeah, you know, because you notice that nobody talks to each other anymore. It's all they're all texting, you know, um, and so you don't have that live voice that, you know, and you don't always know. The, uh, the the contents context of when someone's texting because they don't have voice inflection you don't hear you don't hear what they're really trying to say a lot of times in, in texting and, and anyway we're losing our relationships Ruben yeah that's true how many families sit around a, and have dinner together not too many anymore you know all right gotta we'll, go back to old school we'll be right back. This is Barbara Nicolosi, and we're having a women's conference here at the Sacred Heart Chapel in Covina on September 7th, 2019. This is going to be a great, great day for you to come and meet a bunch of new friends, wonderful Catholic women who want to deepen their Catholic faith and their understanding of themselves as women. You know, this era right now that we're in, so much confusion. What is it to be a man? What is it to be a woman? You know, the Catholic Church has a lot to say about this, and we're going to hear about them. We're going to hear about John Paul II's letter on women that he wrote from Mary Danielle Barber. is going to talk about that. She's going to talk about Mary as a model for all of us. It's a topic that we can never reflect on too much. I'm going to talk about Teresa of Avila and the interior castle and how a mystical marriage is what all of us should be called to, or are called to, as Catholics in our prayer lives, and especially as women in the church. Aileen Blakowski is going to talk about motherhood and homeschooling. And then Father, we have, uh, finally we have Father Charles Murray. He's going to be the celebrant of the Eucharist. He's going to be here hearing confessions. It's going to be an amazing day. We're going to have an hour of adoration together, time to pray, time to laugh, and eat, reflect, uh, grow in our passion for our Catholic faith and our identity as Catholic women. You don't want to miss it. You want to come. You want to bring your friends. You want to bring your daughters, your nieces. That's really an affordable day. So go to virginmostpowerfulradio.org and you can register for this conference or call 877-526-2151. Uh, the Women's Conference is going to be a great event for the Archdiocese of, of Los Angeles area, Southern California Catholics. You don't want to miss it. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888 526 2151. We are back. Jesus 911, two man car. We are 10 8, and uh, we're trying to give you some Catholic briefing. Jesse and I are uh, we're talking about the, re the root cause of mass shootings. It's, uh, we're referencing an article by. 
um, Life League, Catholic Life League uh, founder, uh, Bill Donahue. Hey, Ruben, and by the way, over in your neck of the woods, there was, a, <clears throat> there was I guess, some mass stabbings last night, right, mm. in, in Garden Grove. Yeah, yeah, put the kitchen knives away. Yeah, I mean, this, yeah, exactly. What are we going to do? Get rid of the, the kitchen knives? That, that's a good point you're making. The fact is, it all goes back to Donahue's initial premise. Uh, a person devoid of a relationship with God is going to have no moral compass. When he gets agitated, when he gets angry, when his passions get triggered, uh, if he doesn't have, like you and me have moral boundaries, we're saying, okay, okay, I can't go punch that guy in the mouth, you know, just because he... Much, that, as much as we'd like to sometimes. As much as we'd <laughs> like to. Obviously, man, it's called restraint. It's the Holy Spirit restraints us. It gives us discipline. But the more we go into, the more our, our, our society becomes pagan, the more people walk away from Christ, they walk away from their Christian heritage, and they embrace paganism, which is basically nothing or 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 agnosticism or atheism, now they don't even have the moral compass to restrain their behavior when their passions are triggered. And that's a huge problem because the only thing that can restrain us is the Holy Spirit in us that gives us self-control. And so we have a, I mean, we have a big job to do. It's called mass evangelization. That's the way we counteract these mass shooting is mass evangelization with the gospel of Jesus Christ and the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And like your uh, your friend Dan Schneider said yesterday, is that we need to start with the basics in some cases. Some, a lot of Catholics in the pews don't even know, uh, they're not even at that point where they can be catechized because they're, they're, not, they're, they're falling into sin and they're not following the teachings of the church, like, you know, birth control, you know, and... Uh, Masturbation, um, pornography. And, yeah, or 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 li- having living in a civil marriage, you know, and not going to mass on Sunday. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Ruben. Here's the way. Like I like the way Dan says. He goes, Jess. A lot of people, they're we're all being tempted by the diabolical, but a lot of people, th- th- their temptation is on steroids. He says because they've cut off sanctifying grace from their soul. Mm. So if you cut off sanctifying grace from your soul. And now you're being tempted by your own, first of all, by your own fallen nature, and then by the diabolical, which is all around us like a roaring lion. At this point, you have no ability to resist. And and that's why Dan says the first thing we got to teach Catholics is they have to remove all the obstacles to sanctifying grace. Mm -hmm. You got to get sanctifying grace flowing back into your soul. And now you have the power to resist your own temptation that comes from your own disordered appetites and fallen nature, and also those temptations that come from around your surroundings from the diabolical. Yep, and it's possible. I, I've had guys say, oh, I, I can't do it, man. I can't, I can't stay away from pornography. No, not on your own. I mean, that's your, your fallen nature. Don't, I mean, don't blame it on the devil, but, bl- you know, um, but you, you've got to strengthen yourself. It's like, you know, going to the gym, you you got to start somewhere, and, and you know, and graduate and gradu- gradually do a little bit more and a little bit more and and you build up you know that uh your virtue so that's right yeah all right where were we here it's uh i got it it says it is irresponsible to allow ideologues to drive the discussion of mass shootings this problem will not be curbed by blaming white nationalists or christian nationalists they are they are the new bad guys in the left wing playbook after all Young black men who kill each other in the inner city with abandon have nothing to do with white nationalists or Christian nationalists, yet uh, that they are given less attention by the media than violent white men smacks of racism. I like That's a that. good point he's making. That's a great point. That's Ruben, because this same weekend when we had these two mass shootings, one in El Paso, one in Dayton, we also had 48 people get killed in Chicago, Illinois. And nobody talks about that. No. Okay, this is all black on black crime. So more people were killed this weekend in Chicago, Illinois, you know, independently, one black killing another black, than El Paso and Dayton. Yeah. But if somebody brings that up, you're a racist, you're, you're, you're speaking out against blacks. No, this is a fact. We're being factual uh, that this is happening by and large, not mass shooting, but individual murders, which tally up to more people than the El Paso and Dayton. This happens more every weekend That's right. in Chicago, Illinois. Chicago, Baltimore, D.C., I mean, uh, all the inner cities run by Democrats. I'll have to just That's right. throw that in. It's, it's, it's a fact. Uh, so, 
yeah, these godless, uh, godless communities that, I mean, obviously there's Christians in there, but, but, uh, the they're mis- hostage, poor Christians in those right. communities. Mm-hmm. They, they have no voice and no vote. Yeah. So, uh, it says cities, yeah, cities, towns, and villages across the nation should institute hotlines for the public to call when they suspect that a young person is seriously in need of help. The hotlines would not involve the police. They would be staffed by clergy, guidance counselors, social workers, and psychologists. After fielding a call, they would make an assessment and, if necessary, contact those who know the individual. If the troubled youth cooperates, he would be given the help he needs. That's a good point. Uh, yeah. That's a good point. You know, also, just, with that. I know uh, they were discussing um, – it, it, I can't recall who was discussing, but politic, politicians were discussing the fact that uh, it might have been, you know, Trump's camp that uh, a lot of these parents, when their kids messes up as a as a minor, they turn eighteen and immediately they want to go and get their record expunged or they want to get all, everything, you know, closed off so no one can access it. Ask, access it. So, so many times these people might have these kids might have some psychological deficiencies or, or problems and, and then it it's hidden from you know the uh, authorities so when they go later on to purchase a gun nobody's the wiser nobody knows and so they they they're able to 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 make these purchases and, and kind of fall through the cracks so you know it, it, there's just something they, they're talking about uh making it uh so that they can't expunge their their juvenile record or that information so that it could still be accessed yeah that makes sense to me yeah i mean just the well, i mean what's the difference if, if 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 you had a real bad past before 18 and then uh you know all of a sudden you're 18 now and all of a sudden you get a clean slate the only way you get a clean slate when you go to the sacrament of confession and you die in a state of grace that's when you get a clean slate but in this lifetime it's good that we know everything about you because we have to live with you. Mm-hmm. You're going to be our next door neighbor. You could be working with us next to, next to us in a company, and if you have a past, an erratic past, uh, where where you've had real disordered behavior, we want to know about it. I yeah. mean, in heaven you'll be forgiven. That's a clean slate. But here on planet Earth, uh, just on a practical level, it's important to know if we have uh, if we have uh, psychopaths or sociopaths among us. Yeah, because it's difficult to um, to know the demarcation between psychological issues, chemical imbalances, uh, and and demonic activity in a person. Right. So all those things could be going on. So yep, uh, and it could be a combination of all the all the because you'll you'll find exorcists that will say that somebody with psychological problems, psychiatric problems, that's uh, it's like uh, throwing chum in 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 in, in the ocean. It, it's, it, att- it attracts demons. Yeah. And uh, and they attach themselves to your woundedness, and they make it worse. So, it could be a combination of both, Ruben. Yeah. The Adam, uh, I believe, is Adam Lanza, the murderer of uh, at Newton, um, that school shooting. You know, he was a neurotic, and he needed counseling, and medication, and um, it was almost certainly demon possessed uh, and obsessed. He, he was in need of deliverance uh, and an exorcism ministry. And it's uh, sad to hear the uh, interview with his dad. Oh, uh, he says, man, I didn't know how this, you know. Oh, oh I'm sorry. That that was a different interview. That was the uh, the other kid um, who shot those kids in school. He was a student at that school up north, I believe. And uh, to to hear his dad talk, how man, we we didn't we didn't even see this coming, you know. And uh, but but there's no talk. There's nothing in there about God. There's nothing in his uh in his in his interview i think his name was elliot yeah elliot uh and uh he he did a barbara walters 2020 special and it was called the secret life of elliot roger and uh he he shared frankly uh the shock and pain at being the father of a mass killer at the university of california santa barbara and uh he murdered six people wounded 13 others you know before committing suicide but he he you know, throughout the interview and the background flashbacks, there was not a single reference to God, no reference to church, the Bible, et cetera. And so apparently the Roger household, like many in America today, was totally godless. Mm. So um, it's it's interesting. A lot of these, there's a lot of the, the similarities in these these kids that are going out there and, and uh, whacking people. So Right. Ruben, there's a, there's a one paragraph in the catechism. I'm going to quote it off the top of my head because I mem- pretty much memorized it. But it says, it says the root cause uh, to all moral problems 
is the rejection of God. Mm -hmm. Okay? Think about that. The root cause of all moral... Here, in fact, I just pulled it up right now. Uh, It says, ignorance of God is the principle and explanation of all moral deviations. I'll say it again, 2087. Mm -hmm. Ignorance of God is the principal explanation of all moral deviations. That's a common denominator. Ruben, I want to move over here. There's a, there's a, a, a kind of a two people that I uh, listen to and that I draw some, I glean some wisdom from. I guess apparently Rush Limbaugh said on November 7th, this was a while back ago once, uh, uh, on one of the other shootings last year, or two years ago actually, he was talking about... Uh, he was uh, there was a researcher that, on his show that was talking about uh, he was psychoanalyzing some of these mass shooters and and he's uh, and this researcher mm-hmm. <clears throat> Erica Commiser Doctor Erica Commiser says how many mass shooters went to daycare okay so that's the question that was asked well somebody else that I highly respect Father Chad Ripperger who's a scholar an author and an exorcist uh, he's uh, written a book called The Introduction to the Science of Mental Health. He basically answers Rush Limbaugh's question. He says, uh, "He says, I am waiting for her, a psychological expert, to actually write the article because she's a phenomenological, a phenomenal psycholog- psychologist and a fantastic researcher. She was noticing all these people mowing these people down, not the Muslims, but the actual people from our culture going in and shooting people. She said, I wonder if they have a common element. They only had one thing in common, daycare. Father Ripperger says, The church has known for centuries or for a millennia that the primary period of moral formation for a child is between two and six years old. That's when the associations of right and wrong are built up. That is when they're in the daycare, that is when they are in daycare getting no moral formation. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. And he says, The problem is that the children aren't getting the proper psychological nursing from their mothers. They are ending up with a disaffective disorder, which means they have a disability to have empathy with people. That's why they can mow people down. Mm. Uh, And Father Ripperger ends up by saying, it is a mortal sin for a woman, mother, to work outside the home without a sufficient reason. Wow. Yeah, powerful. Never heard that. Yep. I bet. So he says yeah, the shootings okay. are in many ways, or the article says, this is not Ripperger, this is the article, says the shootings, the shootings are in many ways the church's fault because for the last 50 years, for the most part, has been negligent in teaching this basic truth. Wow, let's break this down then. We'll be right back. Ernesto from Long Beach. You know, I just wanted to comment, you know, and I just wanted to thank you guys. And I kind of wanted to encourage people that are listening, maybe that are not donating, you know, because honestly, I got to be honest, I used to think you guys were a little too over the top, time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. You That's know, right. If God gave us a lot, you know, and I'm, I have the blessing of listening to all this, and I just want to call all the people, you know, I've got five kids, you know, and I don't make a lot of money, and I'm still donating to you guys. God bless you, brother. You're amazing. We got to. We have to do this. We have to do the extra. And it's not even the extra. People see it like it's extra. Kneeling for communion, saying your rosary, saying the Divine Mercy Chaplet. It is not extra. It's what the church tells us to do. Amen. You're a good man, brother. 30 years old, 29 years old, five kids, and I thank you guys for everything. Everybody else, man, get on fire. Fight for the truth, man. I know what I'm telling you guys. There's I so love it. Out there. This is Terry Barber reminding you. There's a women's conference coming up September 7th, 2019 at the Sacred Heart Chapel. Mary Danielle Barber will be speaking along with Barbara Nicolosi. They're going to be talking about true femininity. Be who you are. This is going to be for your daughters, your mothers. Every woman should be at this conference. And the way to do it is go to virginmostpowerfulradio.org or call 877-526-2151.
buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show, and they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Jesus 911, two-man car. We are 10-8. We are out on Soul Patrol. My partner, Jesse, and I are talking about, we're going over some of the reasons these people commit mass shootings. And uh, just talking about uh, some comments. Everybody brings everybody brings in a real valid argument in yeah. the articles that we got. Yeah. Even. Hey Jess, I think we have a we have a caller on the line, uh, Debbie. Let's uh, let's take her call before we get back into this. Debbie, are you with us? Hi, Jesse. Hi, Ruben. Hi, Debbie. How are you? I'm good. I just like to share with you, hey, Jesse. Did you get the relic of the the? Yes, was they that you that sent it to me? Yes. Thank you, Debbie. Thank okay, you very okay. much. That was very kind of you. Yes. Thank it's you. Very powerful. You want to give us an update on your yes. son, Debbie? Yes, I like to follow up and thank you for your prayers. Great. Um, how generous you guys are, <laughs> the work you do, sacrifice, and um, I just like to follow up with my son. He's, uh, last Wednesday, uh, he was supposed to go to, uh, air, uh, to somewhere and fly, and uh, he had a relapse and couldn't make it. Mm. So what we did is we told him, you know what, you're not helping yourself. you either the streets or you get help. So he, he, we didn't let him in the house, and he slept outside, and he came back and says, I'm going to go to Alabama. Okay. And I said, Jeff, this is, not, this is not a playing game. The enemy is really, he really has some plans for you. And it's like, just that last chance was the enemy saying, one more time, one more time. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. So but anyway, so he hasn't gone back to Alabama yet, right? He has a flight okay. on Monday, okay. and he seems to be cooperating and keeping him busy. Um, what can I do in the meantime to pray the prayers, Jesse, of uh, the Christian autumn? Yeah, Debbie, you should be Are praying those every day. Those prayers that are given to us by. The, the team of exorcists, Auxilium Christianorum, pray them every day. Those are prayers to drive evil spirits away from our families, from our houses. Those have to be prayed every day. Also pray your rosary every day for your son's conversion. Uh, this, uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary promises, uh, promises signal graces for those people that we pray the rosary for. Pray the divine mercy as well every day. Uh, our Lord Jesus Christ promises the conversion of, of, of the people that have the most hardened heart if we pray that. you got to be a St. Monica. Instead of being called Debbie from Los Angeles, yeah. you're going to be called St. Monica from Los Angeles because God has called you now to the ministry of prayer, serious prayer. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, offer mm -hmm. offer masses for your son. Do Go old school. Yes. Go back to, again, on Fridays we should be fasting and uh, based on uh, even the 1983 Code of Canon Law. But you can go old school. Start doing Wednesday and Friday fast. Uh, as uh, many of the mm -hmm. apparitions of Our Lady calls us to Wednesday and Friday fast. And also, every time you see your son, you got to give him, it's called wise counsel. That's what the Bible says, to give our children wise counsel, which means you have to be firm but loving. Uh, just like you're doing right now, you got to stand your ground because it does no good for you to enable your son in, 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 in his juvenile behavior mm -hmm. and in his... In a, and in an immoral lifestyle. You're doing everything right, Debbie. It's just going to, you have to be patient. Yeah. Uh, St. Monica prayed yeah. for almost, almost 20 years for her son every day, St. Augustine, till God gave him uh, the grace of conversion. So you're going to see the victory one day. You just got to keep pounding away in prayer. Don't give up. 
Right. Don't give up. <laughs> nope. We'll be praying for you and your son, Jeff, uh, Debbie. Okay. okay. Debbie, you, 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 you got to be like a uh -huh. – you, you, you saw the movie years ago that came out, the, the movie Rocky with Sylvester Stallone, right? <laughs> That's what you are. Yeah. You're a spiritual Rocky in the gym, and you're fighting this big Russian guy, this, and, uh, and you have to train and train and train spiritually, and you're going to see the victory. You're going to see the victory because you're part of Team Jesus. So don't quit. No surrender. Don't give up, Debbie. You're going to see the victory, okay? All right. All right, Debbie and Ruben. Thank you, Debbie. Thanks, Thanks for calling. Okay. Thanks for listening. Okay. All okay. right. Bless you. God bless. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, so, Jess, we, we ended up with Father Ripperger saying that it's a mortal sin for a woman, a mother, to work outside the home without a sufficient reason. And, you know, it reminds me, years ago, uh, and I forget what Apollo it was, that uh, we were all watching it on TV, and uh, there was a school teacher that they allowed to go up into the space. Uh, so she wasn't an astronaut, but she they, they were they she trained for it, and 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 the whatever the Apollo it was, it blew up in it, man, it blew up in space, and everybody was killed. And I recall my priest saying, you know, God's going to ask us. She had kids; she was married; she had kids at home. What did you do with those children that I, I entrusted to you? But you wanted to chase your dreams and go into space, and and this is what happens. I, wow. I, but that's ex essentially yeah. right. Essentially, that's what, a good point. What Father Ripperger is saying, you know, your response, your number one responsibility was to your children, to your husband at home, and and it's not to, you know, be. Yeah, we're not trying to put a guilt trip on anybody. No, no, no. I mean, obviously, I mean, yeah. What Father Ripperger is talking about here, Ruben, really, this is the Catholic standard, and I'll tell you, it's not a. It, a lot of people are not at fault. You know why? Because after Vatican II, this hasn't been preached in 99.9% of the pulpits, unless you go to an FSSP parish, you're probably going to hear this. Because this comes from this comes from a scholastic St. Thomas Aquinas uh, teaching. You're not going to hear this. So uh, the average woman has never heard any priest say something like this. So, they're, so their conscience has not been formed properly. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of it is against the silence from the pulpits. Imagine if, if this was constantly being taught. Uh, and, and I'll tell you... Uh, it's possible. I know it's difficult, but a lot of times we end up saying, well, I want to have as much as my neighbors or more. And so we end up, and I fell into it. You, you end up sending your wife out to work without sufficient reason. Right. And uh, again, it's because a lot of us, our will has been weakened because the preaching and the teaching just hasn't been there. Because homilies and preaching and teaching are supposed to strengthen the will of the lay person so we do the right thing. But if the, if this is the first time you've ever heard this, because you're hearing this radio show, and we're quoting it from Father Ripperger, and basically, Ruben, uh, this is probably one of the first times I've ever heard it, reading this article. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Uh, it's just not taught. Yeah. And, 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 was... uh, and so, uh, you know, uh, what, what I could say is mealy mouth liberal preaching is going to— is going to promote weakness amongst the laity. Just That's a, all I'm saying. There was a high information Catholic that that quoted uh, that was uh, she, it was some comments after that article that we just read from Father uh, Father Ripperger, um, where he answers that psychologist, and uh, I, I really liked what she had to say. And she said, "I'll just share a little bit about it." She says, "Our conclusion is this is true, but there is likely more. I call it daycare plus. It's the total package: drop off kid in daycare." Plus interact, care, love after daycare. So uh, see you at bedtime. Maybe daycare is a common symptom, but selfishness and neglect is the true driver. Mm. So individuals in society have been ordered in our day to value work, production, power, money, riches, toys, activities, fine things. We've been implicitly taught that mothers who stay at home are not complete, not fulfilled, missing out on the joys of working. And he, she says, I see it as my mission to not only raise a large family, she's got seven adopted kids and one biological, but to share widely with the public what we do on behalf of the cause of life. We do nothing beyond raising and enjoying our kids. Everything we have, time and treasure, goes to them as long as we have strength and resources. She says the joy of this exchange is incalculable. As we grow older, we receive our repayment in full and with interest. Our home is full. Laughter and love is present. Life is good. Money is an afterthought. Mm. Pretty... There's some people, Ruben, that know that intuitively. A lot, most people, you know, a lot of us, 
we just get caught up in this, uh, you know, and, and we have to have as much as the Jones and uh, that sin of envy. It, 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 it's, it starts uh, permeating our soul, our thought conscience, and we fall into this. And, uh, and we start, we put out our wife out there without sufficient reason. Let me tell you about a guy who I consider a, a Catholic stud. He listens to this show every day, by the way, Ruben. Mm. And, uh, and he kind of intuitively knew this. I'll say he's, I'm going to embarrass him, okay? He's a deputy sheriff, by the way. He's about to retire in about another year. And he listens to this show every day. His name's uh, Deputy Frank Gutierrez. He is actually my compadre, okay? I baptized uh, one of his ki- kids. His wife doesn't work. He has 15 kids. Wow. On a deputy sheriff salary. Is this microphone on? Okay. He has 15 kids on a deputy sheriff's salary. All biological kids, Jeff? Yeah, they're all his from the same woman. Uh, and, uh, his, and his wife has never worked a day in her life. She takes care of all the 15 kids. Um, and he goes, by the way, to St. Vitus in San Fernando, Ruben. Hey. Yeah, he's an L.M.er. I'm starting, you, you'll, to, see, you'll... I'm starting to see a common denominator here, Jess. <laughs> yep, you'll so, see those. The, 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 the... All I'm saying is this, is that yeah, yeah. Frank Gutierrez is, is proof positive that you can make it on one salary, uh, on a blue-collar salary. You just have to tighten your belt. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and this man, my compadre, he's been doing this for 30-some-odd years, and I'm sure his kids go out with go with all some of the extras. You know, he can't buy them a motorcycle or he can't buy them a go-kart. Yeah. But I'll tell you one thing. You watch his kids at the Latin Mass over in San Fernando. He's got like six of his boys that are altar boys in procession, and they know that they look like, uh, they look like soldiers up there. It's the most beautiful things to see, mm. and they're all the Gutierrez boys. So yeah. kudos, Frank. Uh, you're part of the solution, not yeah. part of the problem. Man, they... they... They have to use two pews in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anywhere he goes, it's a pew and a half. Yeah, least. well, I wonder what kind of what kind of car they drive to fit everybody in. It's those big old vans, those big old, uh, you know, daycare vans. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know that same the same uh, woman who commented on that I just read. You know, she makes another good point that, um, although day- daycare is a leading symptom, but but isn't the primal cause, and we know this, the primal cause is the destruction of the family unit and the removal of God from the family altars yeah. across the land, which is in a spiritually healthier time was the leading subtext of our civilization. So, uh, yeah, there's a couple yeah. other things here. Yeah, again, see, my partner, Fr- Frank, his family's totally Christ-centered. He's got 15 kids he's going to unleash upon society that love Jesus and that uh, know their Catholic he's faith. Gotta, he's got to have a religious in there somewhere. <laughs> I think he will. This is Mary Danielle Barber, and I would like to invite you to join us here at the Sacred Heart Chapel in downtown Covina for a true femininity, be who you are, women's conference, Saturday, September 7, 2019, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Barbara Nicolosi and I will be speaking. It's $35 a person, and you can register at virginmostpowerfulradio.org or call 877 877- Five two six two one five one. We hope to see you at the Women's Conference, September 7, 2019. Jesus said to the apostles in Luke chapter 10, Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me. According to St. Boniface, in her voyage across the ocean of this world, the church is like a great ship being pounded by the waves of life's different stresses. Our duty is not to abandon ship, but to keep her on course. May our Lord help us remain ever faithful to his church, to aid and defend her. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support for the Terry and Jesse Show. We now have a program where you can donate your old jalopy, your old car that you don't want anymore, and 80% of that profit will come right back to the Terry and Jesse Show. You just call 855-500-7433. 
Tell them you want to donate your car to the Catholic Resource Center, and that will support us. Call 855-500-7433. Thank you, and God love you. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Jesus 911, we are back. We are um, talking about, uh, well, the mass weird, shooting mass in general, shootings, basically. But mass what's, shootings. what are some of the root causes? And we discussed two articles. And, uh, and, and so just to recap, uh, uh, you know, the... We were talking about women in the workplace, and we're not putting down just to, to know that we're not right, putting down right, people that are working, not. you know. Um, but but there are sometimes there um, people by their own choice they they seek secular you know per, pursuit of uh, secular pleasures and comforts and financial advance in a widely uh, varying degrees and neglect their children and 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 uh, yeah, that's God. the point that that's, we're making. Yeah. So, Ruben, also one thing, there's a Bible verse, uh, it's in 1 Timothy, I forget which, I'll, I'll, I'll grab it right now, but it says, it says women are, ch- are, women are saved through childbearing. It's in Scripture in the New Testament. Mm. It doesn't say women are saved by being president. It doesn't say women are, are saved by being CEOs. It doesn't say women are saved by being attorneys. It doesn't say women are saved by, being, ha- by having MAs and PhDs. It says women are saved by childbearing. That's what it says. So, again... Uh, I know, I know all of us, we wrestle with our, we struggle with our disordered appetites, especially us as men. We say, I want more money. So I'm going to put my wife out to work again. A lot of us fall into that. I get it. And all we're trying to do with this program is heighten our awareness of old school Catholic teaching. And, and, and uh, as father Ripperger, you know, he, he, he doesn't uh, shy away from saying that the, that the church is to blame too. So, you know, because especially to blame Ruth. Yeah. The church, these are the leaders that should have been pounding this since the sixties. The culture beginning well over a half century ago, Jess, uh, the consequential failure to vigorously promote orthodoxy and orthopraxy, you know, it's been a, a major uh, cause of the surrounding corruption within uh, the secular societies. And, and these aforementioned issues are, are correlates of that disillusion. So that's right. Let's. That's hey, we got a phone call. OK, cool. We got John calling from Kentucky. John, you're on. Go, my friend. Hey, guys, real quick, um, I wanted to digress just a little bit, uh, because when you were talking about St. Monica, and for years I used to, you know, I was was always burdened with the preach the gospel always and necessary, you know, use words, and sometimes it seems like people want to think that St. Monica only prayed, and there's, I I believe in the power of prayer, but she dogged Augustine. I think he snuck <laughs> off in the middle of one night. I think she, he snuck off in the middle of, of the night once and went to Rome, and she followed him. So, I, I mean, I think she, you know, it's like, you know, people will say with my kids, well, you just pray, pray. You just go ahead and pray for your wayward daughter, and everything is going to be fine. And don't worry, God's going to answer your prayers. Well, I think no. Yeah, I'm going to call her up. I'm going to see if she'll listen to, uh, you know, um, Jesus 911. I mean, I'm I'm not going to lay down and die. I believe in prayer, so I don't want people to take me wrong. But, uh, you know, uh, Monica just didn't. Oh, yeah. Yeah, John, you're you're absolutely right. In fact, here's what Father Ripperger says. I just heard him recently in a lecture. He says, when it comes to parents, here's our job as parents. He says, you have to pray for the conversion of your kids, that they receive the grace of conversion, and you have to give them, here it says, wise counsel, wise counsel. He says, based on the fourth commandment, mom and dad are called to give their kids wise counsel for the rest of their life. So, yes, it's not either or, it's both and. You pray that, that they receive the grace of conversion, and you give them, you always have the obligation, based on the fourth commandment, natural law and positive law, to give your kids, it doesn't matter how old they are, 
wise counsel for the rest of your life. And here's the third one that I'll add. This is my own. Along with praying for their conversion and giving them wise counsel, you also have to live the faith because if, if you're trying to give them wise counsel, uh, you know, with, with, uh, you know with, with a 40 ouncer in your hand and burping and belching <laughs> and, and watching, uh, you know, soft porn on, on the television, it's not going to go very far. You've got to live the life of a follower of Christ so your kids say, man, what my mom and dad tell me, they're very consistent. They live the life of a follower of Jesus Christ. That's why St. Paul says, be an imitator of me as I'm an imitator of Christ. Hopefully, us as parents, we're imitating Jesus to the point where when our kids see us, when they come over and visit, they said, wow, my mom and dad, they're really sold out for Jesus. So now our words and our prayers don't fall on deaf ears. Ruben? That's right. There's nothing more powerful than the, the children seeing you, seeing their father on their knees, praying the rosary, you know, reading his scriptures. That's going to stay with them, that lasting effect. You know, eventually when they come back, because, you know, I, I believe that God answers prayers. So, uh, you know, I'm a classic example. You know, my mom prayed, you know, all prayed the time. Prayed you back into us. the church. Exactly. So, and that was, it was powerful. And then she, and you know, and she did the same for my dad too. So, uh, anyway, John, you make, make a good point. So. Can, can, can I, can I make one, just one more quick point? Sure, quick. Everybody's been talking about gun control, and you got to take guns away and stuff like that. I think it was last month that the law went into effect. But I can go down and buy a gun today, and of course I have to go through background checks, which is really important. And I totally agree with. I kind of want to know what you guys think about this, both being ex policemen. But after that, I can conceal carry, and I don't even need to get a permit in Kentucky. Anybody has a gun here, they want to stick it in their pocket when they go to Walmart. And I actually feel safer because of this, living where I do. Because I'll tell you, if somebody comes into a Walmart around here, they're not walking back out. Mm -hmm. You know, but what do you guys think about it? I mean, I don't even need a permit. I'll I'll comment. You know, I, 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 you know, I was a little apprehensive about that. Yeah, but, uh, but. But I think uh, I'm seeing it now that it's it could be a, a necessary evil. But uh, as long as they've been checked and they're trained on it, so it's it's a slippery slope though. And I, I hate to be walking up on a traffic stop knowing you know not knowing who they are in the car and and knowing the, the potential that they're going to be they've got a concealed carry. So here in Arizona, we got the same laws, very uh, very permissive gun laws. And I can tell you that law enforcement out here, uh, my two sons are Phoenix PD. Uh, most of the cops out here, they're they're very happy that good people are able to carry. Yeah. In fact, uh, not too long ago here in Phoenix, the uh, our version of the Highway Patrol here, the Arizona Department of, uh, I, I forget what they're called again, uh, they pulled over this guy, bad guy. He had a gun. Uh, oh, excuse me. They pulled over a bad guy here on the freeway, on the 10th freeway. The bad guy got the jump on the cop, on the state trooper, knocked him on his on his, on his behind, and took his gun away, and he was about to execute him. Uh, a motorist just pulled over, a good guy that was carrying, and jumped out of the car and says, hey, drop the gun, leave the cop alone. And the guy was, the, was squeezing, about to shoot at the cop, and the, the motorist shot the bad guy and took him out. Okay, Now, if a good citizen here in Phoenix did not have his, his weapon with him, there would have been one dead state trooper. This was about two right. years ago on the freeway. Uh, yeah, I heard so about that. This has happened yeah. several times. It's not the only time. I think uh, based, I've even heard interviews in New York. And NYPD would say we would love for good, the good people to carry cop uh, exactly. to carry guns. Anyway, uh, John, we got we got another caller. We got to we got to move on. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks John. John. Appreciate it. Ernesto from Long Beach. Is this Ernesto from Long Beach? That uh, we listen on on the break. Yep, that's me. Yeah, I love that call. <laughs> I love that call, Ernesto. Well, he had a lot of coffee that morning. Go ahead, Ernesto, go. <laughs> uh, yes, I did. Uh, coffee is called the Holy Spirit. That's right. Um, now, you know what? I just want to add on what you're talking about. First off, that comment you said with uh, Father Ripperger saying that, um, you know, if a mom doesn't – some some with the comment, I'm not sure. I don't, don't want to misphrase it, but something that said it was a mortal sin if a mother doesn't take – you know, they just go out and work when they don't need to. Yeah, yeah. What, what that, right, that, that's what he said. I'll, 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 right? yeah, I'll read the quote when I find it yeah. right now. Yeah, without, he says, okay. it's a mortal sin for a, for a woman, a mother, to work outside the home without a sufficient reason. That's the key operative word. 
everybody has to decide, uh, you know, amongst their wife uh, and your situation if, if you have sufficient reason. So there's not – that's just kind of the bar that's set. Everybody has to decide that themselves. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So like you know on the uh, well, like on the on the commercial, I said I have five kids. I do have I have five little ones. Yeah. And me and my wife, we took God that bless decision. You. She could go to work. Mm-hmm. She could go to work and she could do that. But first off, if she works, all the money she's gonna go is gonna go towards babysitting because babysitting exactly. is super expensive right now. <laughs> yeah. You know. So you either sacrifice, you know, on economical means, or you're gonna sacrifice your children. I think it's pretty easy to see what you're gonna sacrifice. You know. You cannot compare Great your point. income to your children, you know. So it's it's pretty easy. So I just want to, you know, encourage, especially those men, that because there's some men. I know I got a couple of friends, and you know, I try to tell them that tell their wife to actually work. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, yeah, because that so they, they, they can kick I'm, back a little bit. Are telling them, you know, you pick up some hours, you pick yeah. up a little extra, but not only when you work, go back home. You know, and don't just be right there. Be present. Be with them because you're out there working your butt off, listening to your boss, listening to this and that. You know, and when you go home, oh, not now you're the boss. Now they got to listen to you. No, no, you listen to your children too. You pay attention to your wife too. You know, it's like if we sacrifice. Ernesto, ourselves, you're way them. ahead of the curb, young man. God, the Holy Spirit has got a hold of you. Very young. You are way ahead of the curb. I, I commend you. I congratulate you that as so, at a f- fairly young age, you're understanding the implications of the gospel of Jesus Christ, especially a, a, upon your family life and your marriage. Uh, well, good I job, got, Ernesto. Good job. Guys, I'm, I'm so happy that you're a listener. I, yeah, I had my conversion at 22, and thank God I landed to hearing you. I, I started listening to you in Guadalupe Radio on Spanish, mm-hmm. you know, and then you transferred to Esna Radio, and I was listening to you, and then I noticed that you were in English, so I started listening to you in English, and <laughs> I follow you along, you know. So thanks to you, now Ruben, now Terry, you know, um, um, Eddie, you know, and all you guys, now listen to Gary Machuda. That's and good. Thanks to you guys. So wow. it's all to you guys. It's obviously, God has put in you guys on my on my path, you know. So Amen. I just want to comment on that, you know. Hey, Ernesto, you, you got a basketball team? Too. You got a basketball team right now. Let's work on a soccer team. There's 11. Yeah, I'm trying to get a soccer team. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, brother. All right, guys. God bless you, man. God bless. Good bless job. You. All right, Jess. Well, we're, we, uh, we're trying to have time to get to this last one, but this uh, it, it just basically saying that the did, Aiden did Shooter heard evil voices. What do you have to say about that? Well, it's uh, the article says that he he's uh, he was a Satanist. Yeah, uh, he he heard evil voices, uh, and uh, there's also it alludes to the fact that he was a Satanist, which doesn't surprise me because we know that the the end game of Satan is to have you kill people. He's a murderer. But the Bible says in John eight forty four, so he wants his followers to murder people. So that doesn't surprise me. And how does he do it? Well, he, he goes after his uh, his disciples by putting evil thoughts in their minds. Sometimes they're audible voices, sometimes they're inaudible. So this uh, article doesn't surprise me that he was a Satanist, the follower of the devil, and he did what he did. That's uh, the end game. All right, let's let's uh, let's pray hard for our, for our communities and uh, that we we be examples for uh, for everybody that we can uh, lead others to Christ. We need to change society. We need to be leaders. All right. All right. We've been listening to Jesus 911. Stay tuned for Gary Mashuda on Hands On Apologetics. Uh, Jesus 911 will be back tomorrow. Take care. God bless. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests. Oh, my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole church, grant it love and the light of thy spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great high priest, may the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us.